Thank you very much. Okay, so yeah, I found out all three in one picture from the Google. So this is Tesla, one of my uh, dreams. One day, yeah. So <laughs> this is about not about them. So you may wonder what is Tesla doing inside the security topic in WordPress. So let me go on around. So my topic is actually hardy WordPress and a drive vehicle. Two different topics. Uh, I will be able to combine them when it kind of going to end. So uh, who am I? I'm Chatu Ishajit from Sri Lanka, and I'm also an Auth0 ambassador, a company specializing in uh, identity as service and giving you some passwordless login and two-step working and working very much and contributing to open source ecosystem. And I run on my startup, that's it about me. So, some other class. In my garage, yeah. <laughs> in dreams. <laughs> in dreams in my garage. So, what are the things we need to think, consider when you drive, going to drive a vehicle? Any input from you? Oh. Yeah, you need to be here. And brakes. Most probably brakes. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing is actually is the car is in good condition. Is it drivable? Or will it get the parts when I'm going around? And the other thing is if you have a good car, you need to take care of the maintenance. Yeah, you need to think about your car. What do you like? The clean one? It's a BMW? The other one, I don't know, what is it? Do you like which one? So I think you prefer the more cleaner one. Sure. But if you're a geek, you would like the other way. <laughs> <laughs> you hot wire something and you include things, but uh, for perspective of welfare and normal general people, I, prefer, I think the, the cleaner one is a must basic. So if it is maintained well, if it will keep it like that, or if you are not maintaining well, it will going to be like that. If you put many plugins and other things, or any extra stuff, it will be going like that. So, that's more. Other thing is, you have a good car, but do you have good road conditions? You have a good vehicle? Yeah, but you like bumpy rides, or like a good ride? Yeah, uh, when it comes to my, uh, my country, so, the second one is much better road. <laughs> so <laughs> imagine, so the other conditions also matters. You need to have good road conditions. Other thing is, even though you are a good driver, the others are good drivers. So you need to have good ecosystem also. Are they are good drivers? Even though you drive well, somebody will knock you off, maybe drunk, or maybe too careless, or maybe in a mobile phone. Still, you get accidents, even though you are a good driver. Or maybe like this. Yeah, it's common in Sri Lanka, and more common in India also. So yeah, this is going to be like, even though you have good drivers, even you are good drivers, we will be end up like this. And the other thing is, are you a safe driver? Are you curious or are you thinking about you by yourself? And are you think you are like this? Yeah, that's not good. That's not going to be a good ride. Maybe the other good drivers will <laughs> get things. Even though you are good drivers and you have all the good drivers in the world, maybe still they have bad luck. You will get end up like this. <laughs> Even though you have a good car like BMW, but you will like end up like this. <laughs> Even the branded ball. <laughs> so you can think what the point is actually. You need to maintain everything, but still you will get into troubles from the back. So it's okay. Enough, please. Okay, it's, it's all enough. Now it's going back to the topic. So what's going on with WordPress? <coughs> so is WordPress is secure? How many of you think that the WordPress is secure already? Yeah, that's good. You have a kind of a good faith and good trustworthiness of the WordPress. Yeah, it's cool. So anyway, uh, WordPress is secure. 
things okay but there can be some special special things happening otherwise i'm not going to talk about this topic anymore <laughs> if it is sick you so <laughs> let's go on so the threat is actually coming from 50% about it is actually from the wordpress plugin itself and 30% is actually from wordpress core itself it went percent from teams that's the thing so we are the developers kind of things but we like to have bugs in the code you know we cannot have 100% secure or 100% button bugless software it's a kind of a myth so yeah it's going to be but we will do continuous improvements and those things so you don't need to worry about so the recent incidents actually there was a kind of a remote code execution bug in duplicator it's a famous plugin which is used to go black up backing things up and maybe clone in the wordpress it. if you are using this one better to update it because they have an issue yep and ninja forms i think a very famous one it also recently had an issue with uh, cross site scripting and csv injection and they also patched it so if you are in a good if you are in a good uh, hands if you are updated it and also wordpress recent security update recently because of then a bug in the core itself so if you are running this one better to update up and it already updated for you because it's going giving you a security updates normally so there's a project called open web application security project so they actually listed top 10 security vulnerabilities in wordpress the first one is injection it's like sql injection so it's like giving you giving running some sql related commands and getting data from your website and maybe getting the uh, your username and passwords and the broken authentication so also kind of a bug in there so this is the top 10 actually i'm going to be fast on this ones and we'll give you some explanation on the way down and the sensitive data exposure is actually giving the usernames and other emails and all stuff without even logging it and <coughs> there are some other uh, resources third party and using the external external ent entities you will get some other security issues because of these things and it's going to be security mix communication thanks so much sorry so security mix communication is that you actually set up the plugins and all stuff wrong is moving forward and the cross site scripting it is a normal bug you getting from many plugins and web teams itself because you can run arbitrary javascript commands inside the website and get some information uh, especially <coughs> stored in cookies also and you deserialize with the insecure way that you can access the encrypted data and you using the components will with all well known vulnerabilities like some plugins or plugins used in some other open source projects with vulnerabilities most of them actually related to xml parsing and uh, you don't have uh, much information on logging and monitoring like uh, which actions actually occurred and who the one is responsible on these actions so these are the top 10 one actually listed in there so if you are know about this thing or if you are okay with this thing that means you are totally okay for now there may be a new updates coming out so how to drive safely with a car the first one is actually continuous improvements what is continuous improvement the thing is you need to improve your wordpress code and you need to improve about your teams plugins but not enough you need to improve about yourself on the knowledge about security that's why you are here i think yeah so first thing is find secure hosting the that means get a good car not get an old car with some special bugs and all stuff instead of this get a good car like tesla yeah even is is still it had some vulnerabilities but they are good in updating <laughs> so file secure hosting the next thing is even you have a good car 
don't forget to maintain. You need to update the core themes and all stuff. Don't forget it. Update it. You just uh, create an application for a customer and update it, uh, upload it, and just go away. Don't do that. Keep him updated and keep this website updating. So first thing is, get the WordPress up to date. Keep your plugins and themes update. And change the password periodically. It's like your brush. Don't use much often, just change to get a new one. Don't use same the brush to brush your teeth. And uh, keep yourself updated. Just know about what are the vulnerabilities coming on, what are the plugins vulnerabilities, why they are releasing updates, what are they in there. So keep yourself updated. There are some security related blogs, and uh, if you can, you can follow, I will share some links in the uh, end of this session. You can keep updated with what are the uh, vulnerabilities coming up. And next thing is, use your own, not default. Don't use whatever things that gave them, give them, you use your own ones. Like, the first one, don't use admin as you're using it. Everybody knows it's ad admin. So, get some random one for you. And you have a WP config, which is the one, one of the most important things in the world. Basically. So, they have separate keys that in that WP config. This key is used to encrypt the session and everything in the database related to encryption. So it has souls, nuns, and all the security keys, which you need to have your own randomly generated keys. And WordPress has an URL, an API to get these random generated values. You can put it in there. And don't use WP underscore prefix. Everybody knows that normally you use as a default one. So use your own one prefix, don't use WP underscore. This thing is, Prevent user enumerations. Like you go there and login, and you put just some random usernames and check in there. Or you go to the authors page and get the list of users. So try to prevent user enumeration. Have kind of a capture challenge. Or you can use kind of a rewrite tool to stop the query screen. And next thing is, don't forget about the old ones. If you don't use any user account, if there are any Inactive users, don't keep them in the system because you also forget and what you may also forget the passwords. So and you don't know that it is active anymore. So keep don't keep them in the system, just delete that users and allocate their post into a, some other account or the admin account. And this thing is the one actually I had a nightmare. So disable the XML RPC if you are not using, most of the time you won't be using this one. So what happened was in my experience. So we had a shared hosting with uh, about 10 sites of the clients, one client in the same system, and all actually hadn't disabled the XML office, and it's funny. So we got a DDoS attack on one site, which made the server got overwhelmed, and the server administrator actually shut down whole account. So all the 10 sites actually running on there was down for about three hours, and most of the sites actually had a really good reputation, and it was, yeah, it was a nightmare for me. So, it is get this from the experience. You can actually use a TXS to disable XML RPC, or there are plugins available to just disable this one. So, the, this is the most common places that get DDoS attacks. So, people actually try to do the XML RPC calls from a bots, and it will be making your resource overwhelmed, and you're getting the processor usage very up, and the administration will be shut the account down if you're using a shared one. That's why it told me in the earlier slide, get a good hosting. If you have a good hosting with good resources, then you not, not need to worry. But if you have a shared one, you need to be worried about these things. The thing is, disable the file editing in the WordPress dashboard. Why is that important? Uh, let's see if, you, if the somebody actually get an access to your user account in some way, they first try to change the plugins and all stuff using the WordPress dashboard. So it's better to turn this off so it, you will may get a less amount of hacking if they got, your user account got hacked. 
otherwise the result will be very different because they can change the uh, plugins and make change on the front end and it will be kind of a nightmare to get fixed it again also because you don't know what the files change it's on there then you need to go and do a diff or change remove all things thing uh, next thing is uh, limit the login fail attempts then you are really good with the brute force attacks because if you limit it like uh, for failure attempts just block the IP then the brute force attacks will be going to be going down otherwise they will try to use multiple usernames or multiple passwords and try to log in time to time so this is normally there because there are many bots trying to check your logins just try to do the brute force attacks and there are some tools where you can check it how is the attacks going on and know how to disable these things and best thing is this one. This is more important. Backup regularly. So if there's some bad thing happen, you haven't copied restore and go start again. If you don't have a backup and you are in a catastrophe, uh, catastrophe, so uh, you don't think about it. It's very hard. Yeah, it's what's happened uh, when you was actually starting now. So this is one of the first lessons I learned. <laughs> So yeah, normally I set up a backup solution from the server plus not using the WordPress actually because it uh, makes the resource going up. So I actually set up a backup ser service from the server itself. So it backup all the thing with the database and the files. And use two-factor authentication. Then you know somebody is going to log into your system. And it is more secure if you are actually doing kind of a media related things so where your image really matters most so better to use a two-factor authentication then you know that only a authenticated person is logging to do the kind of a changes in the post or the new articles the other thing is use uh, plugins from trusted sources like wordpress plugin directory or somewhere else but if there's some site saying that they have premium plugins for free don't get into that trap. They are not giving you a free, they will have some backdoor inside it. So better to get it from the trusted sources. Because it's only one file and it is very open source, you can actually put it into a plugin directory and it can open a, a completely command line enabled PHP back, uh, backdoor. So only one file, you can actually, it's open source, you can actually use it and put it into a plugin and give it to a, somebody else who doesn't know it. And remove unused plugins and themes. Since they are unused, you are not going to update it or you don't know that it exists anymore. But it's still they are in your file system. So it still it, the vulnerabilities in that unused plugins also matter matters to your site. So and it is good for your performance of the WordPress site also if you uh, remove the old unused plugins. <laughs> and better to have very limited number of plugins also rather than it has all much of features in the uh, plugin uh, WordPress plugin directory you don't need to install every, everything in your <laughs> WordPress site so it's better to have a limited number of but they are essential for your site and uh, turn on comment approval so then they, you, you don't get very how to do your CEO you, uh, we are doing uh, some search engine experts uh, or you don't get any drug related uh, advertisements so if you are turn off this comment uh, turn on the comment approval then you can see it and just delete it or use an kind of a spam related plugin to uh, just delete this spam comments which are uh, uh, open in your approval box there was a site actually for a client which actually had about two uh, twenty thousand uh, spam comments waiting in the approval box but after we actually use a plugin on the spamming things, it is going to be automatically remove these plugins and uh, take the same text that comment uh, has the spamming things. So it, they are going to block it anyway without even coming to the comments. The other thing is, in recently there's much big hype on this one. So better to use HTTPS because now it's very affordable. Not like at earlier time getting an SSL is pretty hard and it's very expensive. But even now, there's services like Let, Let's Encrypt, you can get the free SSL certificates. So why not use it? Uh, even at least for WP admin. 
where you have the password things. But if you have running an e-commerce solution, you normally have, won't have it. Uh, this SS, uh, SSL thing actually make you secure and apart from that, if you are going to buy a domain like .app, it's mandatory to have a TTPS in the domain itself. And if you are going to upload yourself like plugins or change or you have your own plugins, use SFTP, not unencrypted FTP tunnel. Use an encrypted FTP tunnel. I think most of the new hosting provider does support it. So use kind of encrypted way to upload your files also. The new thing is that you can have an audit log, which make you easy to monitor which user did what change. Will have that will go and this user actually installed this plugin and he actually activated or deactivated or this user went this way and activated this feature in this plugin so then you know which which one is actually responsible for the changes in if you have multiple persons actually working on the uh, these projects then you know what's happened even the client if they did some kind of change you can actually make him responsible for that change and uh, this is especially for the developers. Uh, in your production application, turn off the debugging. Otherwise, <laughs> if you have all the errors, it will be show off your what is server version and what your the PHP version and all stuff. So you may be actually forget to turn off, but turn it off in the production apps. And not only these things, like road conditions, apart from your WordPress, it matters. Like Apache, PHP, and Nginx. Even the system had vulnerabilities and even will have vulnerabilities. So you need to know about these things if you don't have a managed hosting account. You have your own hosting account, you need to take care of what is on PHP errors, what are the errors in Nginx. Or otherwise, if you have a good hosting provider, they will take care of this one. So you only need to worry about if you are running your own hosting solution and get some DDoS protection. There are some free, uh, free solution and there are some paid solution we can uh, use as, as a load balancer to make it uh, protected from the DDoS attacks. So since I said many vulnerabilities exist, how are you going to know about them? So there's a, a community project which calls called WP uh, Vulnerability Database they have all the vulnerabilities listed down with specific uh, codes so you can actually know about what's wrong in there and uh, all the reported vulnerabilities in there and they also have if there's a fix or not. Apart from that, if you are very geeky, you can run it your own way. So this is an open source project where you can actually use to attack your own website, not attack actually, it will be running on your website and get the enumerated what is the things are running on. This is a, a recent uh, screenshot from the WordCamp Youth Threat. So I run it on WordCamp Youth Threat in today morning and don't forget about the timestamps, it's, it's still warning. So it gives the WordPress version, it's running WordPress 4.9 Point nine and alpha code. So this is actually from WordCamp, and uh, this is actually version is still from the WordPress. So they have the recent version in there, and uh, there's no vulnerability defined in that version. And there's about ro uh, there's about ro robot txt. There's a one is existing, and they said that the readme file also present. Uh, from my point of view, better to remove the readme file also from your site because it gives out your WordPress version. And it can show that it's running 2017 theme. So it's going on there and give you what the themes are running and there's no vulnerabilities in the theme. And it's going to have, you can see they have gotten the plugin and they have a tag creator, WC force type, complex and jetpack also there and they're using uh, WP super cache. Uh, so all the plugins actually doesn't have any vulnerabilities where the version they are running. So this tool is actually free and it's open source. You can just get it from the GitHub, and if you have a PHP runtime, you just can run it in your command line and with your websites. Uh, and then you can actually get the insight what is wrong with your website, and you can update if they need it. Can you show the uh, URL? Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. This is vulnerability, vulnerability scan. It's open source and you can actually contribute if you want. And it's actually pulling the vulnerabilities from the previous one. So even if they, they identified version, they will pull the uh, what the vulnerabilities available in this uh, database. So it's going to be compared with the website that you've given to you. And it has uh, different, different uh, parameters. You can pass the basic scan, default scan, and they are full deep scan also. This take time. And I'm going to move to summary. So if I summarize the whole thing, you need to, don't forget to update. And use your own, don't use the default. Disable the XML PC if you are not going to use it. Limit the login attempts. And back up regularly. That's the most thing that I can tell you. And then remove the unused plugins, themes, don't keep it. Use the secure connection, use HTTPS or SSFTP, SFTP. And keep yourself updated about what the vulnerabilities and what the WordPress things are going on. And if you summarize this one, the one problem is called continuous improvements. So you need to improve about yourself, what's going on with the world and what's going with the security. And that's all folks. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me again in this work camp, work camp with Trev. This I came from uh, Sri Lanka all out all, all day to here. And thank you very much for welcoming me in here. Thank you very much. <laughs> and if you have some questions, I think. Yeah, yeah does I, anybody have any questions? I have some time. Uh, the first thing that I told me about the use the less number of plugins. So if you want to have kind of things, don't use multiple things because it will going to reduce your performance. They are going to use the scanning all the stuff, so it will be running always. So it will be uh, harmful for your performance. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not going to recommend anything anyway. Uh, but you can use a kind of a, about one one plugin to check your uh, file system to uh, have vulnerabilities or not. So then it will uh, alert you on this one. And you can uh, kind of use a firewall to block all the, like, uh, bot. there are a database with the bot IPs, which are going to uh, normally put brute force attacks on your login page. So you can actually block them using separate plugins. Not, there are some good plugins which have this all thing in as one package. So you can actually enable that one, then it will be going to limit your logins and they are going to log the audit things, what is going on with the site and they will give you the updates thing, what need to be updated, like uh, this plugin needed updated now, so it will send an alert for you. Uh, so there are plugins, but my recommendation is uh, just yeah, install all of them in a demo server and get some insight on them and choose one that uh, support you best use case. Don't use multiple. Yeah. Um, one remark on your scanning thing. Uh, I think I've only used it on your own website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as for the security plugins, WordFence security, uh, in my opinion, one of the best ones. Yeah, but uh, as a WordPress, uh, WordCamp speaker, I cannot recommend any plugins in here, but maybe after the session you can speak. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> because it's not good as a speaker to recommend any things. It will be biased because I am, I am biased. <laughs> that we have steam time. We do have some time. Are there any other questions? or? Don't be shy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going back on Monday, so better to ask questions. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about SVG images? Uh, 
SVG images, like vector images, like sometimes people recommend to use them because they take uh, much less space, but it's not supported, I think, by default by WordPress, and some people say it's making you vulnerable. Yes. Yeah, it is making a... Yeah, if you know what you're doing, it's totally fine, but it is actually, SVG is actually kind of a XML format, so you can actually inject something into that file also. And you can actually inject some files that makes break even your plugins also. Like if you're running a uh, uh, plugin that makes you compress the images, sometimes it will try to run it on the SVG and if it has some uh, malformed uh, text actually in there, it will break the plugin also. Down again, and they are in the library, it's, it's okay, right? Yeah, but if I, as I said, that XML file is in the, inside the SVG format. Yeah. So if it actually uploaded an, uh, by a vulnerable file, it will be staying there. But uh, SVG is still good for the performance because it support multiple resolution and stuff it's because it's a vector format. So it's good for the performance because it will be a very small size. No more questions? You sure? You all just tired? <laughs> Digesting? Yeah, thank It's been you a long day, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If there are no more questions, you have about a little more than half an hour, I believe, until uh, closing remarks. So.